How are you feeling about aging? I'm not doing well with it. Nobody does well with it. No. <laughs> uh, how's your health? Do you feel... Ever wondered what happened to your favorite rock and roll stars from the past? Today, we're diving into the lives of 35 legendary musicians who are now around 95 years old. Some stories will inspire you, while others might break your heart. Stay tuned, because you won't believe what these icons are facing in their twilight years. 35. Frankie Valli Legend is one of those terms that ought to be reserved to describe very few. When it comes to singers, one who, without doubt, falls into that category is Frankie Valli. Crammed into his 5 foot 4 inch frame is a talent so formidable it has given him a career spanning more than 6 decades, with the veteran singer turning 90 last May 3rd. His falsetto voice, unmistakable and iconic, has graced some of the most memorable hits, including Sherry, Big Girls Don't Cry, and Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Taking a quick flick through his life, it's easy to think it has been a thing of dreams. Frankie has enjoyed massive success with the Four Seasons, sold millions of records, and inspired the Broadway hit Jersey Boys, which chronicles his journey and that of his bandmates. Yet, behind the glitz and glamour, Frankie has had more than his fair share of tragedy. While international stardom brings its own trials and tribulations, Frankie has carried around the heaviest weight of all on his shoulders, the grief of losing a child. In 1980, Frankie faced an unimaginable loss when his daughter Francine passed away from a drug overdose. This devastating event cast a long shadow over his life, a pain that no amount of fame or fortune could ever mitigate. Thirty-four, Petula Clark. Petula Clark has had a successful career spanning more than seven decades. During a throwback interview, 91-year-old Clark looked back on her career, recalling both the highs and lows during which she suffered from depression. Clark looks back on all her achievements with pride. Known for timeless hits like Downtown and Don't Sleep in the Subway, her music has left an indelible mark on pop culture. However, back in 2013, the star also opened up about the tougher side to fame. This included her fears that stardom had adversely affected her three children. Balancing a bustling career with motherhood is no small feat, and Clark has often worried about the impact her public life had on her family. In addition to her concerns for her children, Clark experienced her own personal struggles. She endured a brief bout of depression due to a difficult personal patch, which led her to seek medical help. Depression, often exacerbated by the pressures of fame, was a challenge that Clark bravely faced head on. The producer said, well, would somebody like to come up and say a piece of poetry or sing a song, you know, just to calm things down? Nobody else volunteered, so I said, oh, I'll, I'll sing a song, <laughs> and there it is. 33, Pat Boone. Pat Boone, born June 1, 1934 in Jacksonville, Florida, made a name for himself with his wholesome pop hits in the 1950s. His smooth voice and clean-cut image appealed to a wide audience, leading to a string of successful songs that defined an era. Later in life, Boone transitioned to hosting evangelical radio and television programs, continuing to influence many with his faith and values. However, Boone's career has not been without controversy. In the 1950s, he faced heavy criticism for singing homogenized, sanitized versions of rock and roll songs originally written and popularized by African American artists. Critics argued that Boone's versions diluted the raw energy and authenticity of the original songs, contributing to racial tensions in the music industry. The term Pat Boone tragedy refers to the widely misconstrued belief that Boone's squeaky clean image and wholesome persona directly caused the decline of rock and roll music in the late 1950s and early 1960s. Family offending films. They make films that parents don't want their kids to go see. But the industry continues to look for and spend billions 
on films that make America look like the cesspool of the world. 32, Willie Nelson. Legendary American singer, songwriter, and guitarist Willie Nelson has led one of the most successful careers in country music history. Behind the scenes, he was grappling with a tragic life that saw a string of devastating losses and difficulties. Decades into his career, Nelson lost his mother, Merle M. Harvey, to cancer in December 1983. Seven years later, he suffered a shocking financial crisis when the Internal Revenue Service seized his assets due to unpaid taxes. He lost many of his possessions, including his beloved ranch, recording studio, and many of his instruments, which were all taken to satisfy a $32 million unpaid tax debt. Nelson also buried his son and a daughter. Billy, who died by suicide in 1991, and decades later, Nelson would lose his daughter, Renee. I woke up still not dead again today. The internet said I had passed away. 31. Chris Christopherson. Born Christopher Christopherson in the border town of Brownsville, Texas on June 22, 1936, is a country music hall of famer who ranks among the most versatile of American talents. Chris Christopherson's medical issues began at the dawn of the 21st century. In 1999, he had triple bypass surgery. Christopherson also tested positive for Lyme disease after a misdiagnosis. Christopherson's wife revealed that the disease took a heavy toll on her husband's health, including memory problems. In addition, the musician battled multiple ailments, including sleep apnea, knee pains, arrhythmias, and anemia, in between contracting the infection and its subsequent treatment. And you're shooting through space on this river of life that you're right. 30. Neil Sedaka. Neil Sedaka's story is one fit for Hollywood. The singer had a rocky start to life and barely managed to make it alive, considering that his mother tried to abort him on a roller coaster. Neil's music career had a similar rocky path, but the breaking up is hard to do singer was, in his own words, a fighter and a survivor, and kept at it until he became hugely successful. As he was still quite young, Neil's mom, Eleanor, became his manager and took over his finances as well. However, she was very controlling and always threatened to cut off his money whenever she didn't get her way. Eleanor also infamously got a lover while she was still married to her husband, who turned out to be Neil's manager. Together, they squandered her son's resources. Neil and his mom fell out when he discovered the situation, and he refused to talk to her for a year. However, the mother and son duo eventually reconciled. By the time Eleanor passed away at 89, Neil had become fond of her. Sadak is back. Hi, I miss playing for you, and I hope I can bring you joy once again. 29. Ringo Starr. Ringo Starr is best known as a member of the Beatles with Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and George Harrison. He is not only one of the world's most famous musicians, but the richest drummer of all time. After the Beatles broke up in 1970, Ringo Starr spent almost two decades lost in a haze of alcohol and drugs. Starr said he lost full years to alcohol and drugs before attending addiction treatment in 1988. He's been sober ever since, more than three decades. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy Happy birthday. Birthday. 28. Bob Dylan. The iconic singer and songwriter behind massive hits like The Times They Are a Changin' and Like a Rolling Stone is still kicking as healthy as can be. But Dylan wasn't always one for the healthiest of habits. In a 1966 interview, Dylan explains his early struggles with drugs, specifically heroin, when his musical career was just starting to ignite. You still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where 
um, I am now. 27, Paul Simon. One of the most paradoxical figures in rock and roll history, Paul Simon, born October 13, 1941 in Newark, New Jersey, suffered from a low self-confidence and would often struggle with negative feelings and saw psychiatrists several times. In 1984, he said, most people look at me and wonder, how could that guy be depressed? And now I feel that people were seeing a more accurate picture of me than I was. So what's this, what's this crazy talk about retirement? I said, I'm going to stop touring. I'm just away from my wife and my kids. Just, it's just too long. 26, Art Garfunkel. Art Garfunkel partnered with singer-songwriter Paul Simon to form one of the most popular duos in the history of popular music, Simon and Garfunkel. The pair, who made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1990, have had a turbulent relationship over the years and have each enjoyed successful solo careers. But it was on stage together when Art experienced a serious health condition that affected his career. Whilst performing in the USA on a Simon and Garfunkel reunion tour, Art suddenly lost the ability to be able to sing. Mid-song, the singer's voice vanished which caused immediate worry and panic. Subsequently, he was diagnosed with partial paralysis of his vocal cords, meaning that he not only had to withdraw from the rest of the tour, but also take a significant amount of time away from the industry to recover. What are the chances? Walk me through the chances. Could we ever, ever, ever see him and Paul back together? Take it out. 25. Carol King. Carol King is the most successful female songwriter of the latter half of the 20th century in the USA and the UK singles charts between 1952 and 2005. Despite her musical success, she faced profound personal challenges, including turbulent marriages and traumatic experiences. The last issue led to two of her divorces. It also led to several years in which she suffered verbal and physical abuse from one of her husbands who was mentally ill and addicted to drugs. Mine is, I would never be with someone like that until I was. Mm. But here's the, the more um, shocking point, I suppose. It start, to me, it was shocking after the fact. I stayed. 24. Brian Wilson. Brian Douglas Wilson co-founded the Beach Boys. Wilson is known for his formerly high-range singing and for his lifelong struggles with mental illness. In 1964, Wilson had a nervous breakdown and resigned from regular concert touring to focus on songwriting and production. As he declined professionally and psychologically in the late 1960s, his contributions to the band diminished and legends grew around his lifestyle of seclusion, overeating, and drug abuse. In the 1980s, he formed a controversial creative and business partnership with his psychologist, Eugene Landy, and relaunched his solo career with the self-titled album, Brian Wilson, 1988. Wilson disassociated from Landy in 1991 and went on tour regularly as a solo artist from 1999 to 2022. You know? Really? Yeah, sometimes I can't hear any music. Other, other times I can hear a full record, you know, produced by Brian Wilson, you know. 23, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger is best known as the flamboyant lead singer of the Rolling Stones. Since becoming famous 50 years ago, Mick Jagger has had a series of high profile relationships, most tragically with designer Loren Scott, who was found dead in New York on Monday, March 17th, in what was being investigated as an apparent suicide. Mick Jagger was devastated when his girlfriend of over a decade and acclaimed designer Loren Scott tragically took her life in 2014. Well, I said to myself and I said to the others, I think, look, if we're going to, we've been recording, we made, we made lots of, did lots of sessions, but I didn't think the stuff was, we did was outstandingly wonderful. It was good, but was it great? And I was thinking, was it really great? And I said, if we're going to do a record, we have, it has to be great. 22. Roger Waters. 
Roger Waters is an English musician and singer-songwriter who co-founded the rock band Pink Floyd as the bassist. Following the departure of the songwriter Sid Barrett in 1968, Waters became Pink Floyd's lyricist, co-lead vocalist, and conceptual leader until his departure in 1985. The former members of Pink Floyd have had a long-running and highly public feud ever since Roger Waters, the principal writer of the band's best-known material, left the group in 1985. His former chief collaborator, lead guitarist David Gilmour, carried on using the band's name, leading to bitter legal battles. Aside from a couple of momentary reunions, the two showed no interest in burying the hatchet, let alone working together again. All the filthy, disgusting lies that the Israelis told after October the 7th like what? about burning babies and women being raped, which were all completely... Actually, women were raped. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. Well, there's no evidence. Been... 21. Steve Miller. Steve Miller is a blues and rock and roll guitarist and performer. Steve Miller was wary about the music industry from an early age, but even with his numerous successes, the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer has been screwed plenty of times. But anytime Miller got short shrift, it wasn't for lack of reading the fine print, he tells the Washington Post in a new interview. As an aspiring musician, the singer, songwriter, and guitarist famously turned down multiple record deals until a label presented him the right deal. But the music business has its share of liars and con artists, as Miller is quick to point out. Miller has always been keen on controlling what he can control. And as a result, his bands have never played gigs at a discount. He learned early on that saying no was his best negotiating tactic. Uh, let's talk about Welcome to the Vault. Uh, why, why now? Why, is, why this box set now? Well, you know, I had, uh, had to put all of my archives in a database. Yeah. 20. Joni Mitchell. Iconoclastic and outspoken, singer Joni Mitchell has been a musical force for almost six decades. In her teen years, Joni Mitchell had a tryst with a handsome fellow artist named Brad McMath. Following the fling, Mitchell discovered that she was pregnant. When McMath found out, he abandoned Mitchell. Virtually penniless and fearing her parents' scorn, she fled to Toronto to give birth to the daughter she would name Kelly Dale Anderson. Unable to provide for the child, Mitchell gave her up for adoption. It was a decision that would haunt her and influence her music for the rest of her life. Embracing the free love movement of the era, Mitchell left a string of famous paramours in her wake. Famous men in the entertainment industry including David Crosby, Graham Nash, James Taylor, Leonard Cohen, Jackson Brown, and Warren Beatty. Along with a turbulent love life, success exposed Joni Mitchell to other excesses. In 1975, Mitchell became addicted to cocaine. It caused her to suffer bouts of insomnia. It would take her years to completely overcome her addiction. And in March 2015, Joni Mitchell was found unconscious in her Los Angeles home. The singer was committed to intensive care where she underwent tests which revealed she had suffered a crippling brain aneurysm. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Um. 19. Keith Richards His name is synonymous with a lifetime spent ingesting a Herculean quantity of illegal drugs. He only gave up cocaine after he split his head open falling from a tree while foraging for coconuts in 2006. The incident required him to undergo brain surgery. Back in 1976, Keith Richards lost his 10-week-old son, Tala. The news nearly drove him to suicide, but he was saved by the band. He was so distraught by the loss of his son, but felt that he was saved after going on stage with the band and playing. How are you feeling about aging? I'm not doing well with it. Nobody does well with no. it. No. <laughs> How's your health? Do you feel robust? From that end of it, I feel perfectly fine. I mean, I feel no different. I could jump on stage now and do, do the show, you know. 18. Jimmy Page. 
Music legend Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin is one of the most celebrated and beloved guitarists in rock and roll history. Page has lived a vibrant personal life. Some of his behavior is proven to be controversial in nature. With Page's international fame, it is not surprising that the guitarist attracted plenty of women. However, Page decided to pursue a minor, according to Grunge. Her name was Lori Maddox, and at the time she was a 14-year-old baby groupie. Paige was 28 years old. You're a good judge of other guitar playing, right? And guitar playing in general? Yeah, I'm a pretty good judge of it. I think you are. Yeah, but now you're going to mention guitarists, I don't know, I bet. 17. Buddy Guy. George Buddy Guy is an American blues guitarist and singer. He is an exponent of Chicago blues who has influenced generations of guitarists including Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, Keith Richards, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Jeff Beck, Gary Clark Jr., and John Mayer. Like the blues itself, the life of Buddy Guy has been all about joy and pain, beauty and sadness. I was, you know, I didn't, when I taught myself how to play, I looked and said, oh man, if you learn how to play a guitar, you're going to be the only one who can do it. 16. Chubby Checker Back in 1960, Chubby Checker came out with a number one hit record. It was called The Twist. Checker may have blamed The Twist for derailing his big nightclub career, but he wrung it for every dollar he could, and he continues to pop up every now and then, insisting that the song is the biggest of the last century. The twist may be a distant memory, but Chubby Checker is still here, selling beef jerky and singing Come On Baby for the millionth time. My daddy's sleeping. He says, it's a little flat there. I says, Dave, they'll never know. I gotta go home and do my homework. I'm in trouble with my books. <laughs> 15. Dion Warwick. Dionne Warwick, born on December 12, 1940, is an impressive figure in the entertainment industry. Warwick has earned and lost her wealth while a pop, adult contemporary, R&B, and gospel music singer. Dionne Warwick filed for bankruptcy, citing more than $10 million in tax debt dating back to 1991 due to several consecutive years of negligent and gross financial mismanagement. Yeah, well, it, we, I never gotten to disco. Uh, that was a period of time where I basically was, <laughs> I was becoming a mommy. 14. Grace Slick. The bookies probably would have given really long odds that Grace Slick, front woman for Jefferson Airplane and its later incarnation, Jefferson Starship, would live to be 85. One of the decisions the band made was to fire Slick. Starship were about to play a show in Germany in 1978. Grace tore into an alcohol-fueled tantrum, throwing bottles, refusing to get ready for the concert, and demanding more booze from room service. Once on stage, she taunted and insulted the audience, a night of dumb, drunken decisions. She decided to get sober, realizing that the only person I can change is me. And with those decisions came the decision to quit the stage. She's emerged a few times, but mostly she creates art in her home in Malibu. California, for instance, could uh, relieve all their problems, make marijuana legal, tax the bejesus out of it, and I think the politicians are worried about their constituency saying... 13. Bobby Rush. Over seven decades, Bobby Rush has had one of the lengthiest careers of any blues and R&B musician still performing today. Rush faced many challenges throughout his lifetime. He nearly died in a gas explosion and a bus crash. He was also sent to prison on a drug charge. Throughout his career, Rush also experienced many forms of racism. He says he was never signed to a record label because he was a black man who can read and write. And he experienced many personal tragedies as well. He was the only surviving member of his family after he endured the loss of his three sister-in-laws, his two daughters, his wife, and his son. He eventually remarried and had another son. I pray that this in honor of Muddy Waters. 
B.B. King, Tyron Davis, Johnny Taylor, all the guys coming before me that I looked up to. 12, Yoko Ono. Yoko Ono is the world's most famous unknown artist, most notably because of her third husband. She fell in love with one of the world's most famous men, John Lennon. Ono is largely regarded as the reason for the disbanding of the Beatles. Ono's reputation has been overshadowed by the life and fame of Lennon. She feared she was becoming too mainstream and was losing her work ethic, so she took some time apart from Lennon. The pair reunited after she found out she was pregnant and later birthed her son, Sean Lennon. Ono quit working when Mark David Chapman shot and killed Lennon outside of their home in New York. After his death, Ono went into seclusion until she emerged in the late 1980s. It doesn't happen twice, you know. <laughs> and so, okay, well, what did I do? And, uh, well, I did my best, that's all I can say. 11. Roger Daltrey Roger Daltrey was born in England toward the end of World War II. He fashioned his first guitar with his own hands. He's been a sheet metal worker, portrayed Franz Liszt on the silver screen, farmed trout, and is the driving force behind the Teenage Cancer Trust charity. In addition to an esteemed solo career, he fronted The Who, interpreting the lyrics of Pete Townsend for more than half a century while trying to keep the peace in one of the most volatile bands in rock history. Whoever first coined, he's a rock star, as shorthand for boldface success. 10. Pete Townsend All four members of The Who had significant moments of tragedy and tribulation throughout their lives, but guitarist and singer Pete Townsend's childhood had a series of particularly sad and disturbing moments. In a 1993 Rolling Stone interview, Townsend remembers his parents, both performers, had a crazy life. Two fiery people who split up when I was very young, and I was dumped with my grandmother for two years. In an examination of his 2012 memoir, Who I Am, Michiko Kakutani of the New York Times relays Townsend's stories of his cruel and mentally unstable grandmother taking in male boarders, one of whom he remembers molesting him. Townsend was also arrested on charges of suspicion of possession of child pornography. Months after his arrest, he was cleared of all charges and noted in an official press statement quoted by Ultimate Classic Rock that the charges stemmed from viewing said images as part of personal research while writing his autobiography with no nefarious purposes. You know, the Who don't exist anymore. You know, we don't go into a studio, you know, with me, Keith Moon, and John Entwistle, and a keyboard player with me on guitar and make backing tracks. 9. Ian Hunter Few in the rock and roll world have a rich, expansive history quite like Ian Hunter. A singer, songwriter, and all-around talented musician, Hunter's unpredictable story in music spans over seven decades with so many tales to tell. Recognized as the leader of Mott the Hoople, Hunter also built himself an impressive career as a solo artist worked extensively with the great Mick Ronson, and continues to create new music in the present day. Ian Hunter Patterson, born in 1939, had hit his teens before rock and roll redefined teenage expectations, but rock's arrival captured his imagination and altered the course of his life. He came of age as rock and roll lost its innocence, served a mind-expanding apprenticeship in Hamburg, watched the beat boom give way to mod, saw psychedelia toughen into hard rock while remaining on the perpetual periphery of stardom. Meanwhile, his life happened. Flat-footedly sidestepping the armed forces draft, skipping one step ahead of debtors, he raised a family by supplementing his unreliable musician's income with countless blue-collar jobs. Put the big boots I wasn't on. bad, but I wasn't in that league. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it'd be a lovely thing. Do you do you think rock's improved? Do you think it's it's better now than it was then? Is no, it... no, I think it's a downward slope. Eight, Randy Newman. 
Randy Newman is an American film composer and singer who is well known for composing The Princess and the Frog, Meet the Parents, and various Pixar films including the Toy Story, Monsters Inc., and Cars franchises, as well as A Bug's Life. He wrote iconic songs such as Short People, You've Got a Friend in Me, and We Belong Together. His songs often seem fed by anxiety about racism, about the bomb, about suffering in the sunshine. But the five years since his last album of pop songs have also brought a rupture in his 18-year marriage and the death of his mother. The emotional hardships of his childhood are evident in Dixie Flyer, New Orleans Wins the War, and Four Eyes, the Land of Dreams trilogy that covers his life until age five. The songs offer rare glimpses of the alienation that Newman felt as a Jew in the Deep South and the trauma he experienced viewing the world hazily. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Seven, Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney's importance to the second half of the 20th century cannot be overstated. With the Beatles, McCartney played a pivotal role in the rise of rock and roll in pop culture. In 1956, Paul's life irreversibly changed when his mother passed away from breast cancer. And in 1995, his wife Linda was diagnosed with breast cancer also. The same disease that took Paul McCartney's mother would take Linda McCartney on April 17, 1998. After the passing of Linda McCartney, Paul McCartney married model and media personality Heather Mills. The union led to a daughter named Beatrice. Unfortunately, after only six years of marriage, Paul and Mills divorced, and the drama was played out in the British tabloids. I say the first time I ever did it, uh, it was very emotional, and it, it keeps being emotional because, you know, I'm singing with my old buddy again. 6. John Cale John Cale is a Welsh musician, composer, and producer known for his role as a founding member of the rock band The Velvet Underground and for his career as a solo artist. As a young, growing musician, Cale suffered from TB, and the medication prescribed was laced with opium, sending him into fits of ecstasy and delirium. Kale would reflect that his later heroin use and musical experimentation could be traced back to these events. People think that hard talk is, is, is antagonistic. It's not. It's really about subjects that are, are awkward for people to talk about. And we got through a few of them, and it was painless. And uh, I admire the show a lot. 5. George Clinton George Clinton is an American singer, songwriter, record producer, and band leader. Clinton is regarded, along with James Brown and Sly Stone, as one of the foremost innovators of funk music. Clinton, who grew up in Plainfield, New Jersey before becoming a songwriter for Motown Records in the 1960s, pointed out that he hasn't always received such plaudits. I learned early on in this journey that you are only as big as your latest hit, said Clinton. So you had to keep things in perspective, to keep from getting a big head. I found out that there would be times when it seemed like everyone knew your name. Then there were times when no one knew you. I learned to respect the balance. In fact, I did something that I had never done before, and that was like walking to the studio while the band is playing. Y'all trying to record without me. Four, Ray Davies. Ray Davies, the Kinks leader, found himself at a personal crossroads on July 15, 1973. Filled with the anguish of his wife Reza leaving him and taking their two daughters with her, this was a new low that he could not escape. It was one that he only saw one way out of. Only a few hours after the Kinks set, Davies' girlfriend noticed that he acted oddly. Then, he produced an empty bottle of pills. Davies was rushed to a hospital to have his stomach pumped. He would survive, and years later explained what had really happened. The frontman conceded it was all a suicide attempt. Ironically though, he would claim this low would be the start of his climb out of despair. 
Raisin never got back with him, but he reconvened with his brother, and the kinks carried on until 1996. We had a gig up north somewhere like Sheffield to do that night, and we went in the studio at one o'clock, recorded it, and did the vocals in about three hours. Three, John Anderson. John Anderson's singing career began in 1962 with his brother Tony in a band called The Warriors. His musical journey took a transformative leap when he became the frontman of one of the most influential bands in progressive rock, Yes. Over five decades, Anderson's ethereal voice and creative vision have left an indelible mark on the music world. In his early years, Anderson dabbled in the rock and roll lifestyle. He smoked during the 1960s and 1970s and even tried cocaine once, although he found it unappealing. Despite these experiments, his focus remained on his music and artistic growth. In May 2008, Anderson faced a severe health crisis. A severe asthma attack required hospitalization, marking the beginning of a series of health challenges. The difficulties persisted throughout the year, leading to the band's decision to replace Anderson permanently with vocalists Benoit David and later John Davison. Way to go on tour and make people understand that we understand who we are. You know, we love Yes Music and it's who we... You know, it's special. It's very special to, to, to do Yes Music. And especially with Trevor and Rick, it's just a, an amazing time. Two, Eric Burden. Eric Burden, the former lead vocalist of the R&B and rock band The Animals and the funk band War, is regarded as one of the British Invasion's most distinctive singers with his deep, powerful blues rock voice. His life is a tapestry of wild stories, most of them true. There are tales of Eric Burden that seem almost too outrageous to be real, like the time he freaked out Jim Morrison by playing Russian roulette with a glass chandelier or the night he dropped acid with Janis Joplin at the Fillmore. Burden was tight with Jimi Hendrix, hung out with John Lee Hooker in Detroit, and once found himself sacked at gunpoint. He tore through the desert with biker pal Steve McQueen, and after a bizarre episode involving cuisine-related fellatio, became the inspiration for the Eggman in the Beatles' I Am the Walrus. Embracing the 60s lifestyle to the fullest, Burden's first acid trip occurred at a James Brown gig in Paris, an experience that turned him into a serious devotee of mind-altering substances. His adventures and misadventures became legendary, painting him as a figure who lived on the edge both on and off the stage. Hello, sir. One, Loretta Lynn. When people wax nostalgic about the golden age of country music, they inevitably get around to talking about Loretta Lynn. Over her nearly seven decades of songwriting and singing, she racked up an impressive 16 number one hits, becoming a true legend in the genre. But Loretta Lynn's life was far from the picture perfect image of success. She lived through almost unimaginable loss. In 1963, she said goodbye to her friend and mentor, Patsy Cline, who tragically died in a plane crash. In 1984, her favorite child, Jack Benny, died in a heartbreaking accident, striking his head on a rock while attempting to cross a river on his horse. Just over a decade later, in 1996, Lynn's husband, Oliver Mooney Lynn, died of congestive heart failure after a four-year battle with the disease and a lifetime of causing trouble. The losses continued to mount. In 2013, her daughter Betty Sue succumbed to emphysema, and three years later, Jack Benny's oldest son Jeffrey died unexpectedly on the family ranch in Tennessee. These personal tragedies were compounded by the deaths of her frequent collaborator, Conway Twitty at age 59, and her beloved manager, Owen Bradley, who passed away in 1998 due to a respiratory ailment. Loretta Lynn's relationship with her husband, Mooney, was tumultuous to say the least. Despite being married for 48 years, Mooney was an alcoholic womanizer and to a large extent, a deadbeat. 
While Loretta spent months on the road touring and making money to support their large family, they had six children together, Mooney drank, slept around, and squandered her hard-earned dollars on land they could neither afford nor maintain. The stress of this chaotic relationship eventually took its toll on Loretta, who struggled with addictions of her own, notably to sleeping pills. She had a lot of people worried last year when Bad Health forced her to cancel her tour and delay her album release. But when we met up at the Ernest Tubb record store in Nashville, I found an American icon feeling great. She's the queen of country. She's a coal miner's daughter and one of country music's most enduring stars. If you found this video insightful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with fellow music lovers, and subscribe for more deep dives into the lives of your favorite stars. Until next time, keep rocking.